Hi guys, this is Ivy from Womply, and I'm here to walk you through how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program loan form directly on the Harvest website. First things first, it's going to take you to a page that looks just like this, where it's going to ask you whether or not you want to start a new application, or whether or not you want to continue with an application. In our case, we're going to go ahead and click Start New, and it's going to take us to a box where we can fill in our email address. The whole reason why is it creates a unique URL that it's going to send directly to your email. That way, in case you need to go find a piece of information, you're not quite ready to finish the doc, or you just need to take a break, you can actually pick up directly where you left off. Once you go ahead and click on that, enter in your email, it's going to take you to a page that looks just like this, where you can complete your Paycheck Protection Program application itself. Up at the top, you can see all of the different steps I'm going to take you through to make sure that we can fill this out together. So starting with general information. First, it's going to ask us to provide our contact information. Things like first name, last name, email address, and phone number. Then, it's going to ask you to tell us about your business. First, we're going to enter in your business legal name, when you were established, what's your full address down to city, zip code, and state, what your organization type is, and this actually is a drop down, so please pick the one that's most applicable to your situation, and your business phone number. Once you've gone ahead and verified that this information is correct, go ahead and click Next, and it's going to take you into your loan details, where we're going to fill out a couple of things together, starting with your loan application, the signed SBA Form 2483. All you have to do is click right here and download it, and once you do, it looks just like this. Now, it is important to make sure you fill out every single bubble on the page to make sure that you're not missing anything and that you don't have any reason for your application to be postponed. So starting at the top and working our way down, first you need to check what type of business you are. In our case, we went ahead and clicked S Corp because that was most applicable to us. DBA or trademark if that's applicable. Business legal name. Full address. Your business TIN or EIN or SSN. Phone number. Primary contact. And email address. After that, it's going to ask you to enter in the amount for your average monthly payroll. It's going to have you take that number, times it by 2.5, and then add an idle loan if you have an idle loan outstanding, and then turn that number into this box here. Once you've done that, it's going to ask you for the total number of employees, and then what the purpose of the loan is. Please click every single one of those boxes that's applicable for your situation. In my case, I went ahead and clicked payroll, lease, and utilities. After that, it's going to take you into a section where it's going to have you list all of the owners of 20% or more of the equity of the applicant. Applicant meaning business in this case. It does only have two box. If you have more than two people who need to be on the application, simply download this again and fill out their information into these boxes on the following application. Attach them both when we get to the next page. So in my case, it's just me. So I went ahead and entered in my name, my title, my ownership, the TIN, EIN, or SSN and then my address. After that, it's going to take us through an eligibility questionnaire just to fill out a couple of boxes, and we're going to do that together. First, is the applicant or any owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for department, or declared ineligible? In my case, that's no. Has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct guaranteed loan from the SBA or any other federal agency that is currently delinquent or defaulted? That's a no. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have common management with any other business? Again, that's a no in my case. And next, has the applicant received an SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan, IDLE loan, between January 31st, 2020 and April 3rd, 2020? If yes, we'll go ahead and provide the details on a separate sheet. In my case, this is a no again. Then it's going to ask us four more questions. Is the applicant, if an individual, or any individual owning 20% or more of the equity of the applicant subject to an indictment, criminal information, an arraignment, or any other formal criminal charges? In my case, that's a no, and make sure that you go ahead and initial right here to confirm our response to this question. Next, within the last five years, for any felony, has the applicant, if an individual, or any owner of the applicant been convicted, pleaded guilty, or been placed on a pretrial diversion? Again, that's a no, and make sure that you click right directly into this box and initial that again. Is the United States a principal place of residence for all employees of the applicant? In my case, that's a yes. 
and is the applicant a franchise that's listed in the SBA's franchise directory? In my case, that's a no again. Then it's going to take you into your section called Certifications and Authorizations, where it's going to have you certify a couple of things, including, but not limited to, that you have read all of the statements in the form, including the statements required by the law and executive offices, and that you understand them. That the applicant is eligible to receive a loan under the rules in effect for the time that the application is submitted. That the applicant is an independent contractor, eligible self-employed individual, so proprietor, or two employees no more than the greater of 500 employees. That you will comply wherever applicable with the civil rights and other limitations in the form. That you're not engaged in any activity that's illegal or federal under state law. Then it's going to have you initial next to a whole bunch of things down here. Again, please make sure that you click the initials next to every single box and fill those out. Starting at the top. The applicant was in operation on February 15, 2020, and had employees for whom it paid salaries and payroll taxes or paid independent contractors as reported on Forms 1099 MISC. Initial here. Current economic uncertainty makes the loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. Initial here. The funds will be re used to retain workers and maintain payroll or make mortgage interest payments, lease payments, and utility payments as specified under the PPP program rule. Initial here. The applicant will provide to the lender documentation verifying the number of full-time equivalent employees on the applicant's payroll as well as the dollar amounts for payroll costs, covered mortgage interests, covered rent payments, and covered utilities. Initial here. I understand that loan forgiveness will be provided for the sum of documented payroll costs, covered mortgage interest payments, covered rent payments, and covered utilities, and not more than 25% of the forgiven amount may be used for non-payroll related costs. Initial here. During the period beginning on February 15, 2020 and ending on December 31, 2020, the applicant has not and will not receive another loan under the Paycheck Protection Program. Go ahead and initial here. I further certify that all of the information provided in the application and the information provided in all supporting documents and forms is true and accurate in all material respects. Go ahead and initial here. I acknowledge that the lender will confirm eligible loan amount using required documents that I submitted. I understand and acknowledge and agree that the lender can share any tax information that I provided with the SBA's authorized representatives, including the authorized representatives of the SBA Office of the Inspector General, for the purpose of compliance with the SBA loan program requirements and all SBA reviews. Again, go ahead and initial here. Once you've ensured that you've initialed the entire document up to this point, please go ahead and sign, print your name, enter in the date, and enter in your particular title. Then it has two full pages where it's going to go through all of the extra details, necessary information, and all of the technical aspects of the loan itself, from the purpose of the loan, instructions for completing the form, Paperwork Reduction Act, the Privacy Act, disclosure information, the Freedom of Information Act, Occupational Safety, Civil Rights, and Equal Credit Opportunity Act. Once you've gone ahead and filled out this application to the best of your ability, please make sure that you click File and Save to ensure that you are saving the finished document directly onto your computer. After that, you're going to go ahead and click Select File directly in the application, find the application itself, and go ahead and upload that directly. But what if you filled out the wrong form? In my case, I've got PPP Application Harvest PDF directly in here, but it's not the one that I wanted. I don't have the ability to delete the file because it gives me this error. You, system, does not have the ability to delete permissions on a document storage file. What we're going to ask you to do is re-download the Paycheck Protection Program application one more time and addendum it with corrected directly in the file name. Notice this one says corrected PDF. Go ahead and click open and it notates it right here at the top. On our end, we're going to go ahead and make sure we click the corrected version and remove the other application for you. Next, we're going to go into our loan amounts and fill out this Excel calculator that looks just like this. There are a couple of different pieces that we need to make sure we fill out appropriately. So, there are three different calculators. First for non-seasonal business, second for seasonal business, and third for not currently in business during this time period. 
For all intents and purposes, all we need to fill out is up here at the top in the In Business Between 2-15-2019 and 6-30-2019 section, and that we're a not seasonal business. What it's going to have you do is fill out the total payroll costs from the last 12 months from the employees whose principal place of residence is the United States, and enter that directly in here. Then it's going to ask you to enter the number amount of employees earning over $100,000 on an annual basis in 2019. Then it's going to have you enter the total payroll expenses for employees earning over $100,000 in 2019 here. If you have that SBA, Idle Economic Disaster Loan, after 131-2020 that you wish to refinance with that, go ahead and enter in here. And then it's going to show you. Enter this amount underneath the average monthly payroll in the application, and enter this amount in the loan application if necessary. This way, you have the most accurate pieces of information. Once you've ensured that this section is officially completed for you, again, go up to the top, File, Save As, and make sure that you save that document directly. So you can click Save, Select File, and upload the document itself again. Last but not least, it's going to ask you to enter in your loan amount after that. First, you're going to click Certification, that you certify that the information contained in the loan calculator regarding employee counts and compensation is true and correct, and then it's going to have you enter in the same information that we entered in the last two forms. Average monthly payroll, you're going to times that by two, and do your idle amount if applicable so that your total loan amount is at the bottom. Once you've ensured that all of that is correct and consistent across all of the documentation that you've provided, go ahead and click Next. It's going to take you to Job Details and Tax Returns. First, it's going to have you enter in the current number of employees versus the current, uh, the current amount of employees as of last year. And then, it's going to have you upload all four quarterly tax filings, Form 941 for 2019, or this is where you're going to enter in the Form 1099 if you're a sole proprietor. Go ahead, select your files, and upload those directly here. And then it's going to take you into your owner information. Notice there are five spots. Like we mentioned before, you're only entering in the information for anybody who owns more than 20% of the company or has more than 20% holdings. In our case, where it's just me, I'm only filling out my own information. So my first name, last name, job title, ownership percentage, Social Security number, we just made up some numbers for the sake of this demo. Street address, city, zip code, state, and then you're going to upload a copy of your driver's license. Again, to verify that you are a real person and that you are in fact associated with this company. And you're going to repeat that on every single one of the other tabs for every other owner who's applicable. Once you're finished with that, all you have to do is go ahead and click Next, and it's going to take you to finish your application. Now, this is where things get a little bit important. There is one more number that wasn't included on the form that you have to enter right here in Comments. This is your NAICS code. If you do not know what your NAICS code is, please reach out to us directly and we can do our best to be able to assist you. But all you have to do is do N-A-C-I-S, your NAICS code. And then we're going to enter that in directly right here, 1613. Once you've made sure that your NAICS code is officially in your comments section, all of your information is correct and ready to go, all you have to do is either click Submit Your Application to officially submit that to the lender or finish your application to return to this later. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please reach out directly to us and we're always happy to help. Thanks so much!